And welcome everyone to our usual Friday live session. Listen, if you've ever struggled with feeling productive, staying focused, or if you felt like you've been having trouble staying motivated and losing interest in your topic, this session is going to be perfect for you. So stay around. We're going to come to our productivity masterclass in a second, covering peaks and valleys. You have all felt that before, these different rhythms of productivity. We're going to help you manage them so you can find your flow and hit your max productivity. Uh, I just want to welcome uh, our new members joining us for the first time. Uh, really good to have you in our Facebook group. Some of you are watching from YouTube and LinkedIn. If you haven't joined our Facebook group already, be sure to do so because you're going to find over 30 hours of 100% free trainings. These are the trainings that I wish I would have had as a graduate student because the truth is I, I, now I'm Professor David Stuckler and I've taught at Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, and now uh, University of Milan, Bocconi, where I'm happily settled. And I had a really bumpy ride along the way. I, mean, I still remember the November when I had my back against the wall panicking because I was going in circles. I couldn't get anything done. And if I didn't get my topic right, I was going to get pushed out of the program at Yale University, where I was a grad student at the time. And uh, the sad reality is, I, I mean, even just this week, I have so many students coming to me in a panic, just like I felt that November about 16 years ago. And uh, they come to me asking for help. And the sad reality is when they're two weeks out from their deadline, in most cases, the sad reality is it's just too late. And again, that's why I created this group to connect you early with the support that you need to thrive. And many of you have that feeling that you're just not getting the support and guidance you need. Like you knock on the door of your supervisors and they're too busy. There's a million things going on. Maybe your classes have shifted online. You don't have that sense of community. That's what the Facebook group for is for. Um, we've had really good sessions last couple of Fridays. I want to remind you of those. If you haven't caught some of our academic writing training, it's one thing I commonly hear for new members in the group that had any formal writing training. Um, that's a big, that's a big gap. It's one of the most important things that you need to do well. And sadly, our universities provide all too little training. So uh, drop me a line or my assistant, Christine, in the group, and we will make sure to get you plugged into that. Um, and also, we had a three times quant session, uh, something I've never done before, but we cover how to do some of the fundamentals of quantitative analysis in Stata, R, SPSS, all in one session. Some of you who have been interested in dabbling in R, this is a great introduction. And others of you who just need to get the basics right and make sure you have a sturdy foundation, you're going to get a lot of value from that session. So if you missed it, catch the replay, always available in the group. So with that, I want to dive straight in and I want to have a serious talk with you uh, about your productivity. Now, some of you may be feeling good saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really productive. Um, hey, even for you, you're going to get some value out of the session because I'm going to share with you a few tips and things that you may not have thought about before that uh, will really set you up to be at your peak performance. So with that, I'm going to share my screen because I think the best way to think about productivity is to think about productivity uh, like like data, um, like uh, you know, you've got a, a your units of energy that you want to convert into productive output. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, and Elaine, I can see you're here with us. Really, really good to have you uh, joining us today. Um, and let's see here. Let's go to the screen one. Okay. And uh, hopefully I had, a, I had a glitch the other time on the session uh, with some of you not being able to see the screen. So uh, do, do let me know if you're having some trouble seeing the screen, but it's looking good to me. Okay. So uh, one thing about productivity, I did think about this as an axis, and you have in your day a certain amount of energy, all right? And, and, and many of you know your energy levels wax and wane. And uh, let's say here, energy's feeling good, energy just tanks a little bit low. And uh, here, here's kind of your day and, and your time on this axis. And when you think about a work block, right, many of you guys will think, okay, uh, here, here's my work day and, and I'm done here, I push, push, push and I'm getting a little bit tired and I'm slowing down. That, that's been kind of, I've been pushing, I'm spending my energy, pushing, pushing, I'm wearing down. And uh, this area here, under the curve, this is your productivity. This is, this is what you got out of your work day. And this is what I mean by your productivity peak. Some of you guys, you know, in previous sessions, we've talked about you have some dedicated blocks in your day uh, that, that you need to structure your day uh, to, to make sure you get these product, productive periods and, and protect those blocks. Um, that, that's really, that's really important. 
Um, so here you go, pro productivity peaks. Now, um, what some of you don't always think about is that after you have this productivity peak, your energy, just like anything, Im imagine, uh, for example, you've seen a cheetah in the wild go for a run, that cheetah is then going to slow down and rest for an extended period of time. And so your energy levels are actually going to dip uh, right here and, and get, get a bit low. All right, so this is really, really quite fundamental to, to remember because this side here, and we're going to end up having this kind of funny rainbow color here. This, this, this period here, this is your recovery. This is your valley, right? And it's just like with every mountain where you've got a mountain peak, you're going to follow it and you're going to have a valley. Your, your highs are going to be followed by lows. And I think what a lot of people do when they focus on productivity is they focus on their peaks, but they don't pay enough attention to how to manage the lows. Because the reality is, for a lot of you, um, you, you, you kind of have a good sense of when you're productive and you reward yourself for being productive. And that, that kind of re that reward circuitry in your mind tells you, oh, I did a good thing, I'm going to keep doing these peaks. But really, a lot of people end up getting more productivity if they can take these lows and make them less low and manage them well. And what a lot of the students who come to me have problems with is they actually don't have a strategy at all for the recovery. They're not self-aware. They are self-aware of their productivity, but they're not self-aware of this recovery. And for many of them, they might have a burst of energy and peak and tell them, oh, I did great. I got so much done, but not pay attention to the fact that their recovery curve doesn't look like this, but their recovery curve, again, looks like they hit a low and, and then, then they track down here and they take a really, really long time to get back into, into steam. And they think, okay, I'm back. I just need to have more of these big productivity peaks, these big productivity peaks. And, uh, and I, I think that's a little misguided. And so what I want to talk to you guys about is how to manage these peaks and valleys, what maybe your ideal curve would look like. And I want to give you some strategies uh, for managing both the productive side and especially what you can do to reduce your recovery time. Because the reality is, if you can recover well, you're going to be more productive. And it, it, it's just, just not what we're kind of engineered to think about. So let me, uh, let me move the screen down a little bit and, and go into a little bit more detail about what I mean. So let's imagine a different kind of productivity curve. So I just gave you a productivity curve that looks like mountains. And, you know, a lot of us are, are kind of engineered. We've been engineered by society to have these short bursts, productive peaks. We've become, you know, through, through marketing and quick hits and quick fixes, we're oriented towards instant gratification. You can really see this from music videos. You know, when I was a kid in the prehistoric period, music videos lasted seven minutes, five, seven minutes on MTV and VH1. Now they've shrunk down and they last two minutes. And on the screen, you know, it used to be just a band playing. Now it's, everything's flashing very quickly. And we're used to with, you know, our, our, our iPhones and, and gadgets, we can, get, we can get information instantly. But research isn't like that. It requires extended periods of deep concentration. You can't rely on this kind of big, quick peak strategy to get the things done that you need to get done. So what I'd rather see a lot of you guys have is not a mountain, but maybe a hill, maybe less intense bursts. And just by doing that, you're going to make your recovery time automatically more manageable. And, and the truth is, the, the productivity on this curve will be equivalent to your short burst of intense activity, maybe even more. But what's important is you're going to position yourself well to get back up to, uh, to having your peak peak again right away. Um, just once again, I'm going to check something on the stream because I'm getting a notification that uh, one of the streams is not syncing. So I want to make sure everybody is with me. Okay. Yeah. No, it looks like, looks, looks like we're good. Um, okay. So this looks like less like a, a, a valley. This is more like a productivity hill. Um, and, you know, and, and that's okay. I want you to think about that. So when you think about how, how can I, how can I take this productivity and instead of training myself, especially if any of you have ever felt trouble on recovery, say I did my work now I'm having trouble getting back into it. Oftentimes subconsciously it's because we just expended a huge effort and, and we're, our bodies are telling us, I don't, don't want to do that. It wiped me out. I it was, you know, knocked back. I couldn't get anything done for days and couldn't get back into it. You want to rewire your neural circuitry to the, where that productivity is fun and enjoyable and something you look forward to. And not get into th this cycle here of this first curve 
Because often this is this cycle that people get into, th this leads to a burnout cycle. And, and people don't realize that, that the issue, actually their original sin was committed with this original productivity peak. Because they think, oh, that's what I did right. That's what, that's what was good. I just need to do more of that. And, and they don't realize that their starting premise of that productivity, that big burst of productivity peak, that, that premise is flawed. Um, so I want to come down to this productivity peak. And, and I want you to think now in your productivity, well, how can I manage this? So at least, you know, I, I have continuous, smooth, steady activity that I can fire and execute on a daily basis. You know, I just have a student who's doing um, a systematic review. And uh, he's got a, just the nature of his design. He has to go through a lot of papers, um, several thousand. And, uh, and, and he's an example of this. He wanted to go through and do the screening and eligibility on uh, you know, 500 papers a day. And uh, that, that was a productivity mountain. And uh, he did this. He uh, went through in one day. He, he went through actually more, about 600 papers. And then he had a bad crash. And, uh, and was feeling really low, and it just kind of obliterated uh, much of his week, and he couldn't get back to it. And, uh, you know, it's like an old classic adage, the, the t a tortoise versus the hare. You know, he was trying to be more like the rabbit here, but you know, the truth is, if he would have just taken it slow and just done maybe 150 each day, he would have had more productivity because he could bounce back. And so I think what happens with productivity, uh, many of you guys are like, oh, I'm finally feeling good. You know, I haven't felt good in a long time. Let's do this. Let's go. And you do too much. So when you go into productivity, I want you already, each at your start of day, uh, your day, know what your stopping point could look like. And, uh, and a lot of people, and I totally get it. And when you do get that feeling, when it comes back to you, I'm feeling good. This is fun. I'm in my flow. You want to go and go and go and go. But think about it. Um, you know, uh, if you thought of yourself as an athlete, if I go tomorrow and I run a marathon, uh, maybe I could finish, but I'm not getting back on my feet for a while. I'm going to like be, be just like collapsing on the floor in a heap. Hopefully nothing bad happens to my health. I ask my uh, family and, and girlfriend to like bring me food because I'm just going to be like a walking zombie. Um, <clears throat> so even if you could do it, you don't really want to. You, and I don't think a lot of people go into their productivity and think, what's my stopping point going to look like? They just go into their productivity and say, I'm just going to do as much as I can. I finally got a window. I'm going to do it. So know what your stopping point is going to be. You need to rewire your neuro circuit. You say, I did what I needed to do. No more, no less. Stop there. So find that stopping point. And, and, and some of you need, sometimes might need a trigger. Maybe you need to set a timer. That's, that's another option. Just give yourself a certain window of time and just do the best you can. Go easy on yourself. You know, a productivity, you know, when you put energy and productivity in, sometimes people want to judge it by results and output. Um, but I, really, you can't control that in research. Research is nonlinear. You know, there's going to be some times where you feel like you, you, you can see concretely, oh, I got so much done um, for, for a, a little unit of time. And other times, that, that you still have a big unit of time and you can't see much. Maybe because that big unit of time, you're trying to figure things out for the first time. And that just is going to take some time for you to figure out to forge those neural connections and understand a complex system. That's okay. So another way to do this in your productivity is set a timer for one of your blocks um, and, and manage it that way. And that's okay. Um, and, and really in productivity, you need to get in the habit, again, of rewarding your neural circuitry and giving yourself the grace and gratitude. Say, it's okay. You need to find some way to reward yourself um, that, that you've done a good job on the productivity because too often uh, people reward themselves when they had this big mountain peak. So fi find some way to do this on the reward. Now, I say this on the stopping point because if you can have a productivity hill instead of a productivity mountain and execute that on a consistent basis, this hill is going to add up and add up and add up and, and you will have your productivity mountain in a series of small bite-sized jump kills. Okay, so what does this mean for recovery though? Um, you know, if, 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 I, if, if I haven't run the marathon but I've, I've broken the race up in, in chunks, you know, I'm, I'm going to be able to get back up on my feet the next day. Um, but we still do need to think really hard about our recovery phase. And guys, by the way, if, if anything's unclear, if you have some strategies for managing your productivity and coming up with stopping points, maybe it's a timer, uh, what methods you use, really love to hear that in the comments. It really helps people in the community as we benefit and tap your collective knowledge and experience. You know, some of the strategies that work for me 
uh, may not work for you. Um, I think you can always generalize what does not work. And I can tell you what does not work for a lot of people uh, unless they're already very experienced at it. You know, they have those mental muscles are very strong. They're like an elite athlete. They can run the marathon. You know, for the vast majority, 99% of you, that, that this first model is just not, not the right model, to, at, least, at least to begin with. Um, uh, so, you know, um, uh, let, let me just come down here. Oh, okay, on your health. So now we need to think, come, come back and really think about this recovery phase. And again, it's something we just don't pay enough time to. And, and it's sometimes subconscious, you know, it's kind of like mental health and physical health. Um, sometimes, right, when I say, oh, you know, doctor, I got a broken elbow. Everybody says, oh, you got a broken elbow. You need to put it in a sling and rest it up. But with our mental health, mental health is often neglected because it's like, oh, you're suffering from depression. Oh, just, you know, suck it up and get over it. And, and, and that's not right. Um, and it goes with this with the recovery. It's the same, same kind of thing. This, this is real. But we need to attune our bodies and our minds to, to focusing on this and realize, hey, you've actually, you know, expended a lot of energy and work here. You need to give yourself time to recover. Uh, and this is really the case for research because this research is mentally taxing. Just like hard, you, so we know when we go to a hard gym session, uh, that was taxing. That took a lot out of us. We need to refuel. It's the same thing with this recovery. So I want you to think about your strategies for, for recovery. So what does that look like? Have you guys thought about your strategies for recovery? Um, again, like I said, is, is kind of uh, managing those lows that are inevitably going to be there when you have uh, when you've expended this high, you're you're going to have a, a wave that bounces back. You, you need to manage the lows well. So, what are some strategies? Well, these are going to vary for people, but I find the combination that really works well for a lot of people is to try to hit things that are going to be physical, social, and, and, and emotional, in all all these these areas to to replenish yourself. So. For me personally, you know, I, I've had trouble before where I couldn't sleep at night, um, especially if I had an intense mountain peak close to bedtime, and I'd be in bed and I'm still still turning in my mind and I'm still thinking about everything. So I've, I've shifted my productive blocks to be earlier in the day because you can imagine it's like your engine is red hot; it's just not going to cool down that fast uh, for for you to be able to go to sleep and really relax. Um, and so what I found is. For me, again, me personally, can't always generalize, a winning formula here has, has been to uh, do an intensely productive uh, work session, uh, expend that mental energy, have my productivity heal, and then do something physical. Could be, could be going to the gym, go to a walk, um, something that's going to serve the purpose of taking my mind, dislodging all that activity from my mind, letting my subconscious have time to breathe. So it's going to take it out of my active mind because I'm going to focus on some other physical task that's going to engage other parts of me that were quiet and dormant while I was just sitting at my desk or in the lab or wherever I was working. So I do like doing something physical. And, and physical has the other advantage. You know, if I offered you guys a drug that said, you know, Elaine, your hair on the call with this Elaine, you know, if I could give you a drug that's going to make you smarter, it's going to make you look better. It's going to improve your sleep um, and, and make you more productive. Uh, would you take that? And it has no side effects. Would you take that drug, Elaine? And uh, I, 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 think, I think a lot of you would say yes. And, and that drug is physical activity. That drug is uh, exercise. So um, that, is, that is like giving yourself a superpower. Don't, miss, don't deprive yourself of that opportunity. And, and best of all, it, it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and it's the right thing to do. Uh, for your recovery, social and emotional. Um, you know, social. This is this is friends and family, uh, and uh, I think there's a tendency, especially those who who are on a burnout pathway, to neglect friends and family. They think, oh well, I don't have time for this. I'm so busy. I, you know, I don't even have time to eat. This is uh, this is definitely that definitely a problem. I just want a, a really nice comment here that I think was helpful. And community physical activity removing my face from the screen definitely helps me after mental intellectual sessions. Yeah, I, I mean, I find I particularly crave the outdoors. You can you can combine these as well. Maybe go for a walk with a friend, with your partner, with with a family member. Um, can can really work nicely. But I, I do need that. I find I personally need that to uh, the disconnect and attach. Make sure you get that social time. 
Um, for some of you in university, maybe even if you're living alone in a dorm room, um, you know, just make sure you don't withdraw. Make sure you invest in these relationships. That, that this social capital, as um, social scientists like to call it, is, is incredibly important, and and it's also important, right? As a graduate student, why this is this is a as I've gotten older in my career, I found that the contacts and connections and network that I've made in graduate school has been foundational. It's carried me through my career. And as my contemporaries became more and more successful, um, it opened up more and more opportunities for me going forward. So this is not just, you know, sometimes I think people think, oh, well, this is just a luxury or this is a vice. No, it's important for your recovery, but it's also an important investment in your future. So uh, don't lose out on that. And these, and at the end of the day, look, what's going to matter more than the papers you publish are going to be these relationships with uh, friends and family. Um, so make sure you have that support in place and invest in it because it, it, it is invaluable. And, and, and I know you hear it a lot and it's easy to neglect when you feel under pressure on your productivity, but, but um, that's what you need on your recovery side. And finally, emotional. Um, some people get this, uh, they, they combine this with physical activity. Some people say they, they get a, an emotional or even a spiritual enrichment from doing yoga or meditation. It helps them feel centered. Um, some people read poetry or write poetry or something that's going to, again, hit signs of you that are being neglected when you're being very logical and, and narrow. I want you to be, you're, inevitably, when you're doing research, you're going to be lopsided. Um, you're going to have this big uh, project and that you're really focusing on this narrow thing in, in your field that oh, maybe uh, a limited segment of people in the world care about, um, and, and you're going to be lopsided. But you do need to pay attention to your emotional health as well and your emotional resilience um, because that's what, what, what can so easily tip you into feeling depressed. If like, oh, I had a big productivity peak, oh, now I'm, I'm not recovering well, and then just sink and get, beat yourself up because you can't get back to your productivity mountain uh, up here. Um, you you got to pay attention to your emotional health. I don't have a magic formula. You know, there, there are people who will sell you a magic formula. I have nothing to sell you here. Um, I want to see all of you do well. Um, but um, you, I want you to just track yourself on the recovery side. Can you, how long does it take for you to start feeling good again and, and ready to go? Um, and, and try to benchmark this and not just benchmark uh, the things that are helping you on the recover, uh, on the productivity side. So I'd love to hear from you a little bit more. What, what do you guys do to, to recover? I know Courtney in our group, she talks about she has many pleasures or many vices. And, and for her, that's just, that's cooking. She loves uh, cooking with her family and doing something nice for her family. And that really uh, is a way for her to disconnect and do something really quite enjoyable at the same time. Um, Elaine has a question here I, I want to take. So let me turn and, and take a few questions uh, from, from all of you. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, Elaine, uh, let, me, let me just bring you on here. Um, Elaine, let me bring you on for a second, actually. Uh, let's see if your connection's good enough. Yeah, why don't you put, share that question with us? Hey, Elaine, really good to see you. Hi. Sorry I've been MIA. I started a new contract gig. So one of the things that's been coming up a lot in conversations um, is students not being supported when they're doing emotionally exhausting work. And particularly if you're also a research in your own uh, participant in your own research. Right. And so I have never had an experience of having supervisors or committee members or profs even talk about how difficult this work is. So my area is poverty, poverty, discrimination in Canadian universities. So you go, go, go. And those lows, when you hit that wall, are so hard and you don't have mentorship of how to, what to do with all what you're learning about, how profound injustices are and how it's impacting lives. So um, I don't have, I'm seeking... Yeah. Yeah. Elaine, I'm so I'm so glad you you mentioned that, and and you really raised two things. I think a lot of people, uh, and I, I, I like getting to know everybody in our communities. One of the things that I, I love about this community, uh, besides it being truly international, is that uh, you know a lot of you are are doing research because you really want to make a difference, and many of you are trying to help some of the world's most deprived and vulnerable groups. 
um, to kind of bend the arc of history and try to make things a little bit better. Uh, you might feel fortunate uh, with the position you're in and that you are in a position to help and you want to give. And and, and I love that about the, this community. Um, but what that can do, it can put you in your research. The content of your research can often, in and of itself, also be emotionally taxing, as Elaine points out. I mean, I have one student who's doing interviews with um, transsexual sex workers who, who, who suffer and are exposed to a lot of violence. They're actually the, the group of sex workers who have the highest rates of violence uh, inflicted on them. And uh, this, this has been incredibly taxing for the student. What, what you need to make sure you've got, I mean, and especially from that kind of situation, especially important to pay attention to the recovery stage. And, and like you said, Elaine, no one really talks about this enough. So you need two things in place that I think are, are fundamental. One is ideally you'll have a mentor who, who has worked with these communities before and can also help you in understanding how to manage that. Just like in the way doctors, when they do their medical training, uh, if they're confronting death experiences for the first time, this, this can be very confronting and they need some training to, to, and they get that training to deal with it. Unfortunately, in our universities, that's just not there. And I, I don't have an off the shelf training that I can point you to. If somebody does have one, do share that with us. But um, if you're going to undertake that kind of work, you need to make sure you've got the right support structure in place and absolutely make sure you have a mentor because there are certain risks in doing that work involved. And I don't recommend uh, especially dealing with those incredibly vulnerable populations. You need to go through an ethics review to begin with, but you, you also need to make sure you have that in place. Second is have a community. And, uh, and, and uh, I, I really don't recommend that kind of work if you're isolated and alone. It's kind of the, 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 the thought and notion that a therapist needs a therapist. You, you, need, you need people you can count on to help you, and that's where the power of community really is. Um, and so if you don't have that community, um, reach out to us and let, let's see, uh, you know, and, and that's the power of the Facebook group. We, we have a community there. We also have a more private community for students who really want to work in an advanced way, but reach out to me and let's see if we can plug you in to a community of practice, uh, where you are and reach out for that community. Those exist. They might not be right in your neighborhood, but they might be international. And so uh, I even know for, for, for me, Ellen, when I was a graduate student, um, my community of practice was constructed from uh, my mentors helped me introduce me to those communities. And we were a loose knit group of grad students, um, postdocs and professors working in the same space. And we were in regular and close contact. And that was enormously helpful. Um, I'm really glad you mentioned that, Elaine. Can you think for yourself of where you might find that kind of community of practice? Well, I've, I've, part of my research was creating what I, we call the underclass sisterhood of solidarity, um, but also understanding that um, it is very difficult to find people to connect with because social class is so taboo to talk about in Canada. And trying to find profs who come from poverty so that you have allies and people who, who speak like you is profoundly difficult and quite isolating. And right. it's just trying to make sense of my own lived experiences and coming alongside others and the desperation for change, for hope. Um, often I have felt absolutely ravaged. Even the idea, in th thinking about productivity, I'm quite stressed because I, right. I haven't been able to publish because I had to find a job. Right. I was out of money. So this publish, 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 be productive. Well, that's great, but I have to have a roof over my head. Yeah. But so it's stressed about even the word productivity. Yeah, yeah. That, um, exactly. I mean, uh, Elaine, I mean, uh, literally until, I mean, you've got the fundamentals in place, your house is in order, you've got food on the table. It's really hard to invest that time and energy in research, uh, honestly. Um, I, I mean, I see many students go into self-funding PhD situations, and the, the reality is for a lot of students, that's just not sustainable. You're, you're like, you're trying to, it's like trying to go to a fight with one hand behind your back. You just can't compete with others who have all the resources at play. And this is the accumulation of advantage that wealthier social classes have. Um, now, what you can do is try to short circuit that process and get your own unfair advantages that wealthier groups have by getting the right mentorship. 
and support. And that's going to at least help you to be maximally productive, productive in the time you have. And, and, and a good mentor will not just help you with the hard technical skills, but you want to write mentor that's going to help you on that softer side to help you be become like, like a mentor truly would the, the best version of yourself possible. Um, so yeah, Elaine, totally. Don't, I, I would say, and, and I think for a lot of you who, who have these feelings, just like Elaine's having, you know, if, if you find you're you're not having a product productivity mountain or hill or not being productive at all, um, obviously you've got some other things going on in your life that you've got to attend to, and that's so that's okay. Um, I mean, in, in some cases it can be extreme. Say, uh, you know, you may need to ask for an extension on your project uh, if you have things going on. And many students do need to do that. Maybe they had a death in the family. Things have things do look life happens, and we un understand that. Um, um, and I don't want you to get ten years into your PhD and get your back against the wall where you're going to get pushed out if you got nothing done. Um, but I, 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 Elaine, I mean, you've got to search for a job, get your house in order. This is not really going to be a season when you're going to be at your peak productivity just from environmental cons constraints. Um, so. Um, yeah, yeah, Elaine, I, I'd say based on that, uh, give yourself a, a little bit of time, um, before trying to get these papers out. Um, yeah. Thank you. And thank uh, you for addressing this because we need to talk about this stuff more. Yeah, that's a, a, exactly what fast track is for. And, you know, it's, it's a community where, you know, it's, it's judgment free and you've got, you've got support from professors and other students in this community and we're we're here to help uh, addressing some of these most common challenges that aren't talked about enough so yeah, Elaine, th thanks for sharing your story with us and I, I hope that clears up very soon um and good luck in the job hunt and i'm really glad you, you could j jump on with us here I, i'm going to turn elaine uh, uh, i'm going to turn here and uh take some questions uh fr from the community and uh, Courtney, it's really nice to have you uh, with us as well. I'd really love to hear from several of you what, what strategies you use on uh, productivity and, and especially the strategies you use to help you recover at, after a session. Um, you know, uh, and while, while I'm uh, looking for you guys to send in some questions, I just want to say one thing, one other thing here about stopping points. Um, I mean, do, do many of you, when you go into your work and into a productive block, know what you want things to look like at the end of that block? Now, I often have students who say, well, you know, I'm working on chapter two and I want to be done with chapter two. But they haven't really thought about, oh, well, you know what? I'm working on chapter two. What I want to do is I want to get my figures and tables made for this chapter. If I, and that's, that's a good result. I want to get the method section of this chapter written. Um, I want to make sure you know, I've formatted all my references. Um, so see if you can instead think like, well, I just need to work on chapter two, which is what I so commonly hear from students. Uh, what are you doing today? Oh, I'm just working on chapter two. I want to hear you say, no, I'm going to get done my e extraction table and summarize and put together the figures for this chapter. It's a different way of thinking about it. One is a, a result. And the other is just kind of time being energy being expended into into the air. Um, so, so see if you can start to make that little shift in, in thinking about your stopping point, and even for yourself, how you describe what are you doing today if somebody asks you. Okay. Um, so listen, uh, yeah, we've, we've got uh, a little time. I'm just going to check the stream here in the background. Uh, okay. All right. I know several of you are going to are also watching on our team replay. I love uh, you know the vast majority of you because we are spread across time zones. Do watch on the replay. Um, do drop a line and uh, let us know. Comment below. Replay if you're on team replay. I always go back through and look at any questions or comments that you have uh, to get you support on those. Just want to foreshadow where we're going in the next weeks. Uh, next Friday, we're going to have a fantastic session with Vern from our community, who uh, was you know, one of the students who came to me in a panic and was ready to just throw in the towel and completely give up her PhD, um, had a complete breakdown in her relationship with her supervisor, was not making any progress at all, and, uh, and completely turned it around. 
did a 180 and, and is now trying to figure out uh, where she wants to publish eight papers from her PhD, all, all in a matter of just under six months. Um, fantastic story. I'm so proud of her. And we're going to bring her on to tell you her story because I know several of you have reached out to me feeling the same way, ready to throw in the towel on the cusp of giving up. And, uh, and I think you're really going to be, you're going to be inspired by Vern. And even those of you who are feeling good to just see, I mean, she's flying now, publishing rapidly. So you're not going to want to miss that session. We're also going to have a session uh, with a, uh, one, a member of the community who has expertise in sci psychiatry. And he personally experienced uh, a burnout in his work and wants to come now and share with you uh, what he learned from the experience and from his background in psychiatry, what you need to know to avoid a burnout uh, yourself. And this applies not just to your studies, but to how you manage uh, your, your emotions and your productivity in your entire life and your career going forward. So we're really excited to bring that session to you. That is going to be, if I don't have the dates wrong, that is going to be on May uh, 20th. So a couple of really great sessions lined up, not gonna miss it. Um, as ever, we're gonna be here at our usual time uh, on Friday. Uh, Vern is based in Australia, so next Friday uh, is going to be an exception, and we're going to rework the time to try to accommodate her time zone, because otherwise we're going to be kind of at, at very early, at, at around 6 in the morning for her, which is just not going to, uh, I'm not sure how coherent she's going to be. Um, and uh, so, so we will make announcements about that. I'm going to take one other comment that's come through, and, and then we're going to start winding down. So here we go. Smart goals for work sessions. I like being able to say I accomplish what I set out to do. I like starting my day by laying three tasks that will meet my day, week, month goals. And I really like that. I, I, I really like that a lot. Um, and so uh, thanks for sharing that with us. Uh, let's hang on a second. Just wanted to uh, check who, who sent that on the live chat. Um, yeah. So... Uh, Makes a lot of sense. And many of you, I encourage you, uh, if you haven't seen our optimization of one training, to think about what is the main thing you need to get done over the next few months and make sure that your productive output is focused in going in a straight line in that direction, that you're not getting distra distracted. So just the fact that you put this together um, is, is a very, very good sign. And uh, I, I, I like to see that a lot. Um, and talk about your language of your productivity in terms of your goals, not just like, you know, I, I'm just working on a chapter. Okay, Here, here's another to recover. Um, thanks for sharing this. I, I like this one, uh, this one a lot. I watch a short movie. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I do the same thing. I, I sometimes I will put on Netflix. I'm currently watching uh, Peaky Blinders, which I've been really enjoying. Um, watch a short movie to recover. Talk to a friend, family member on the phone. Anything positive, inspiring, resolve the situation. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So that's really nice. And just, just asking you, I mean, do you, do you just track that, track how you feel afterwards? It's something you might even take for granted, but uh, I want you to just be consciously aware that this is part of that recovery downtime, that this is, this is uh, picking yourself back up. Elaine has a good one that's kind of like what Courtney does. I bake treats for the elderly people in my building. Um, I really like that. Can I get one, one of those treats, Elaine? Um, I, I don't, I have some gray hair. I don't know if I qualify as elderly yet. Um, I'm getting ancient, um, big tree, but I, I really like that. And, and I also think finding ways to, to give, uh, also give us back to you. So, um, you know, I do, do also take the moment at least at some point in the day, I like to do it in the morning, uh, just to express gratitude in your life. Um, you know, sometimes we can get so focused, all right, um, uh, so, so focused on what we need to do. And, you know, focus is feeling. It's so easy to get drawn into, I'm focusing on this, I'm focusing on this, and I don't feel good unless I got that done. And we don't give ourselves time to feel gratitude for all the other things that are going on. And this, in some ways, can be the, the rich man's curse. The, the, the people are so focused on on getting more riches or getting this or that fixation that, that they want, um, they lose sight of all that they already have. And so wherever you are, whatever situation you're in, yeah, there might be some things that are not going well. You may have some struggles, but 
take a moment and remember what things that you can be grateful for um, in your life that, that um, you know, maybe something that you've done, you've worked hard for, that you've achieved. Um, that, that might just be as simple as the health that, that you're enjoying right now or, or the health or the relationships you have with your friends or family. Just take a moment to be grateful. Um, and, and, and that's key. I mean, I'd love to do a session uh, just on emotional health because, again, it's something we don't talk about enough, and, and Elaine mentioned it here. Okay, guys, that, that's a great place to, to end, and uh, I will look forward to seeing you next week. If you have uh, any questions, as ever, um, you know, these sessions are your time, and we use this to prepare trainings that you'll find personally helpful, and this week came out of some students expressing some challenges with productivity, um, just like the quantitative training came from some students saying that they were struggling with some of their quantitative analyses and wanted some support. So uh, this is an open access community uh, for you. So uh, to make the most of that and for you to get the most value, um, I love being in touch. So get in touch with me, get in touch with Christine, our assistant in the group, and we will connect you to the right training so I can be personal help personally helpful for you, or if we don't have it, that's what we also can use these sessions for. I uh, hope you have a great weekend, everybody, and I will look forward to seeing you next week uh, with Vern. Take care, everyone.